So you got the best CPU money can buy, but somehow you want to make it run even better. Well, undervolting is the right way, and this is the right video for you. So welcome back at the Motion PSUs, and here we are with the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D undervolting guide. Few disclaimers before we start. So this is gonna work on every single motherboard in the planet as long as it is AM5 and your CPU physically fits in it, okay? It doesn't matter which brand you have. I'm currently using an NZXT N9 X870E motherboard, but any brand, ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte, doesn't matter, and any chipset, B650, B850, X670, you get the point, they're all gonna work. I'm gonna give you three different methods in this video. The first method is gonna be just a clean, dynamic undervolt. Then we're gonna have a static undervolt, which has its own features. It's less versatile, but it basically gives you a lot less of a power draw and allows you to get very specific control over your CPU. And then as last preset, I'm also gonna show you guys how to actually get more performance, a lot more performance. Now undervolting itself, so the first two, will actually also get you more performance because we go around power limits, but the last setting, it's basically undervolt plus overclock at the same time. So it's gonna be maximum performance. Now, the only thing I ask you guys before we start is I want you to promise me that if the video in the end is going to be helpful, you will drop a like and subscribe because that helps me to get more CPUs and more GPUs. Last, very last thing, and then we're going into the BIOS, we're doing this in the BIOS, is make sure you enable the XMP on your RAM. And also if you do RAM tuning, you can get free performance. Now I do have a full guide on the channel for M5 RAM tuning, it's very important, but let's actually get to the CPU, let's go. Now I apologize for the ultra wide screen and your settings are gonna be different but the placement is going to be the same. So you don't want to go into the overclocking tab, you actually want to go just into the advanced and then go into the AMD overclocking tab. It's gonna be the same in every motherboard, advanced AMD overclocking tab. Now, you want to accept this and then find precision boost overdrive. Go into it and put it to advanced. You now wanna go into the core optimizer, put it on all cores, negative, and literally every single one of the Ryzen 9 1950X 3Ds on the planet will do 15. If you want a safe setting, 15. But if you want to spend some time testing out, I find most of them will do 20. And uh, honestly, if you're lucky and more importantly, if you're gaming, so if you don't care about like absolute stability in productivity, 30 should work. Now, the bigger this number, the better. You're gonna get lower temperature, more FPS because you free up the power limit headroom. This is actual undervolting. And this is all we need to do. This is undervolting. Only this. You don't need to do anything else, okay? So for mine, I'm putting this one on 20 because this is perfect for my system. After this, you want to go and we can actually set a platform thermal throttle control, which basically means uh, our CPU is not gonna exceed what we decide. And I like to lock uh, my CPUs at 85 degrees. Uh, you can actually go lower and lock it to 80 if you prefer your system to be quieter or if you just want to preserve your CPU, this is something you can do. Some people even set it to 75. You know that the Ryzen's are not like Intel CPUs, so they work better if they are at lower temperature. So for mine, I'm going to 85, but you can change yours if you want. In terms of performance, PBO limits is gonna make a big difference for you. This is basically how much wattage your CPU can draw. It's basically a power limit in uh, older terms. And now you can put it to disable motherboard or manual. Now, generally, if you have a very good motherboard, motherboard is gonna be fine. But if you have a very good cooling, you can put it to disable. And uh, if you disable it, your CPU is gonna run very hot but you're gonna get a lot more performance. So you want to play around with this as well. If you're only after temperatures, I recommend you just set throttle limit and curve optimizer and just leave the PBO limits alone or try to put it on motherboard. And with this, we have finished the first step. Let's now go on to the second step, which is gonna be our manual undervolt. So you want to do nothing of this. So this one, just put it back how it was in the beginning. And we now want to go into the overclocking tab. Now, one thing I want to clarify, which every other tutorial is getting wrong, is the gaming mode. So you want the gaming mode to be disabled because if you were to use this, you should have bought a Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. What the gaming mode does is it basically cuts your CPU in half 
and only uses the half with the X3D cache on it. So if we wanted to do this, we could have just bought the other CPU. This is no point. Just leave it off. Then, Zen 5 gaming optimization. If your motherboard has this, enable it. Most of the times, it doesn't do much, but sometimes this actually works. TDP to 105 watts, this is basically kind of what we were doing before of extending power limits. If you update your BIOS, you should have this. I recommend you enable it and you only basically leave this one off if you unlock uh, all of your motherboard, but this is gonna dramatically increase the heat of your system compared to stock. Performance preset, if your BIOS has this, basically you can do color optimizer and uh, basically the temperature limit all in one place, in a simple place without going into advanced and stuff. But we did it manually, so we don't need to touch this, we can leave this one on auto, basically disabled, okay? Now, CPU overclocking. You want to put on customize on this motherboard. Uh, in a different motherboard, you will have something called core frequency on top and core voltage on the bottom. And these are the two simple settings which we want to change. So we want to run our core VID at 1.2 volts and we want to run our CCD zero at 5200 megahertz. This is basically our undervolt. This is a voltage point which is pretty safe, but it's not gonna work on every CPU. You still need to try this out. I find on average for around 5.2 gigahertz all core, which is fast. Uh, you're gonna need on the lucky, very lucky CPU, 1.175. And on the very unlucky ones, 1.25 is gonna work, okay? And you may actually even be able to increase your core clock to 5300. It's gonna give you a nice performance increase. So you may wanna do that. As you can see, during all of this, I had my XMP enabled and my RAM set right. This is very important. You may also wanna set your, your Infinity Fabric. Again, this is part of the memory tuning. I have a separate video for it, but this is free performance. So you may want to do that. And we can now move on to the third preset. So for each and every preset, you don't have to do uh, any of the steps in the previous one. So in my case, we are putting back on auto, the CPU OC, and we are now going back to advanced. We're going back to AMD overclocking, and we're going back to precision boost overdrive. Now we are putting it on advanced again. We are disabling the PBO limits because we need all the headroom we can get. I am leaving my platform throttle limit at 85 because I think if your cooling is not able to handle your heat, you shouldn't overclock this far. And I am going into core optimizer and putting all core negative 20. This is basically the same recommendations as before. The only difference is now I am going on CPU boost clock override and I am going to enable positive and I am putting 100 megahertz on it at least. This is gonna work for every single CPU again. Uh, but I recommend 200 to get a significant boost in gaming. And with this, you're actually doing undervolt and overclocking at the same time. Pair this with some RAM tuning, you can get all the way to 25% more performance out of your CPU. Crazy, but actually true, because also RAM makes a big difference. And with this, we have finished the tutorial. Now, if you want to double check with other motherboards, you can go on my channel. I have different playlists with other BIOSes so you can see the different names of stuff. And if this actually worked for you, remember your promise, drop a like and subscribe, and see you guys in another video. Bye-bye.